Hello. Hi, everybody. Kayla Lawrence. John Brownstone. Oh, loving BDSM, where we help kinksters like you have happy, healthy power exchange relationships. Uh, for us to be happy, healthy kinksters, uh, that involves reading. Yeah. Consuming content. Mm -hmm. Learning new things. Entertaining ourselves. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's where Kinky Book Club comes in. It's why we're doing this thing we are in the fourth month we're still going strong uh haven't had to skip a month yet i'm very proud of us <laughs> <laughs> and so if you're new and you're like it's oh, the small things it is right the small things. Yeah. if you're new and you're like what 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 is kinky book club uh every month we read a book about in some way kink bdsm power exchange and we're mm -hmm. alternating months between non-fiction and fiction and this month was fiction Yep. We read Cheeky Spanking Stories, edited by Rachel Kramer Bussle. And it's an anthology of stories all about spanking. That's right at my Story, alley. Stories that are near and dear to my heart. Yes. Okay. So we are not going to go through all of the stories. There are 20 in here. Mm -hmm. um, these are all short, smutty tales, so there's no spoilers to give away. So what we thought we would do is we would share... The ones we really liked, the mm -hmm. ones we didn't like. And then as I was typing up my notes to make sure I remembered everything, it was like, oh, I have some thoughts on a couple others that were not favorites, were not books I hated. Mm. Um, just so you know about this book, it was published in 2020. Um, there are 20 stories. They are from a diverse range of spanking experiences. It is not all receiving spankings. It's not all stereotypical power exchange relationships of cis guy spanks cis woman there's lots of different pairings and partnerships um i've read rachel kramer bustle anthologies in the past what i would say because this book is now gosh nine years old hmm. um her anthologies today are actually more diverse than they were even in 2012 um, cause I just finished reading another one not related to kinky book club and the, the variety of stories in that anthology was massive. So just, I, I realized something and I mm -hmm. did not know some of this stuff until I sort of, I've immersed myself in some Rachel Kramer Bustle, uh, anthologies lately. One, she's published over 40 at this point. Wow. Right? I had wow. no idea. Now I'm like, I kind of think I want to read most, if not all of them. <laughs> and also a book I read while I was still married to my first husband and fully vanilla that like got my motor running was an anthology edited by her back in like, I don't know when the book came out, but I read it back in like 2011 or so, mm -hmm. maybe 2010 called Please Sir, ah. all about submissive stories. And I didn't know I was kinky. Imagine that. You learn something new about yourself every day, apparently. Okay, so Gateway book. <laughs> let's, let's get into these books. Let's start with the good. Let's start with the, the high points. Let's start with our favorite stories. I had a few. You, mm -hmm. I think, had a few. Do you yep. want to go first? Um, yeah, okay. Now, I'll, I'll have to admit, I liked all the stories, mm. okay? Um, some more than others. Sure. But I really didn't think there was any... Like stories that just, you know, but then again, they're all about spanking, you know? And also, this is where readers have different experiences of books. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. But um, I, I know right off the bat, the one story I liked mm -hmm. that, that you didn't care for too much mm -hmm. was the very first story, mm -hmm. uh, The Perfect Dom. Yes. And see, I, I took it for, you know, a, a piece of... Uh, fiction and I sure. you know I was like well oh, this is kind of cute she found you know the she was thinking she'd never find the dom for her and here he was sitting on her sofa in front of her the whole time and she managed to find him without actually conversing with him about what it means to be a dominant and if that's who he is amazing <laughs> and he's perfect yes <laughs> I had thoughts about that book we'll get to it <laughs> And, um, you know, again, another story that I know you probably just, like, glanced right on you by. You never know. Papers to Grade. It was good. It was not one of my top, but it okay. was good. All it right. was good. Now, what happens in that story? Okay. Um, college professor has papers to grade. Instead of grading the papers, they want to play. 
And they've procrastinated. They procrastinated. Like the, paper, the graded papers are due at 8 a.m. It's still 1 a.m. in the morning. Papers are not, are not graded. graded. I wouldn't know that life. I right. don't understand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, punishment ensues. Sexy, kinky punishment. Oh, yeah. It was a good story. It was not... It was... It, it was good. It just didn't rank up there with my favorites for my reasons of why I had favorites. Okay. Yeah. And see, I figured it wouldn't trip your trigger because it did have a certain element of role play to it. Well, yeah. And that might have been why. Mm-hmm. I mean, the nice thing I can say is on all of these stories, if there was sex in it, because there wasn't always, it was usually hot and nice to read. The mm-hmm. spankings were usually hot and nice to read. It's just there were different elements that would make a story my favorite or one I really intensely disliked. We'll get yeah. to that later. Another one that really um, sparked some interest and raised an eyebrow was a story called Proxy. Okay, remind me of that one. Um, Couple, on a specific day, person gets spanked. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember. And and they get spanked. It it is like a a maintenance, what we would call a maintenance type spanking. Yes, 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 yes. All right. And it occurs every month on a particular day. The person who does the spanking is out of town. Yeah. Oh, Four yes. Weekend. I had thoughts on this one. It wasn't a fave. It wasn't a hate. But I had thoughts. And they had someone that filled in to mm-hmm. give the spanking by proxy. Mm-hmm. So I thought that story was super hot. Mm-hmm. I um, love that the partners had this like really kinky relationship. Here's my problem. And this is so here, here's let me just say this. I understand that when you're reading fiction, especially erotica, especially kinky erotica, there ten- there tends to need to be a suspension of disbelief because you're talking about fantasy and writers are writing sexual fantasies and not all sexual fantasies follow a code of like what's okay and pro- you know what's problematic and full consent and all of that. And I get that and I'm okay with that. Some of my fantasies would never see the light of day because that's probably a crime if not actually a crime. Mm-hmm. So I get that, and I don't have a problem with that. But for me as a reader, I can tell I have not suspended my disbelief enough if I am thinking of those disparities. So in this case with mm. Proxy, the thing I'm like, I'm in it, I'm in it, and then there's this like, what? When I'm like, wait, he literally is having somebody come over that this that they have not talked about ever doing this before. This guy hasn't met, but his partner wants him to allow her to spank him and it was funny because even though it works out perfectly fine it ends up being consensual by all parties for me that was a blip that i i couldn't stop thinking about it was Mm. a moment that took me the reader out of the story story? and it tarnished my enjoyment of the story because i enjoyed the story but okay. those are the kinds of reasons why something can't be my favorite because i could not stay in the fantasy the whole time my brain huh. switched at a certain point and went wait what what? <laughs> what what are we doing here no no i mean because i feel like part of this sucks because i write and i have my own opinions on writing and i edit and I have my own opinions on editing Part of me, I think, would have handled it better if there had been literally a throwaway line saying, do you remember when we talked about this? And if I Mm. could have in my reader brain gone, this has come up before, this is not completely new information, I'd have gone with it. I could have rolled with it. But for me as a reader, I, I couldn't. And it was such a good, it was a good story. And I could have been a favorite with just some, something to say that this was not the, the one partner was not asking the other partner to just let a stranger, you know, spank his ass out of nowhere, like out of nowhere. Because I'm thinking of myself as a kingster, as a person who loves to be spanked. That happens, oh, we're, time out, everything stops, radio silence, bring the lights up. No, 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 we're having a conversation, what's happening here? <laughs> and that's where my head went as a reader. So not a bad story, a very good story. But that I put it on my list of oh we need to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> that that's how I felt about that. Go ahead. <laughs> What's another favorite <laughs> that I can ruin for you? <laughs> wow. You Look, see, I do it to your childhood you programs. See, she, she does it to my. She she has done it to holiday cartoons from my childhood. Well, now I'm doing it to your kink and your erotica. Let's. We're I can have, do it to porn too. If we're gonna we're gonna have to talk about this. <laughs> 
about the story. What? <laughs> Name another favorite. All right, another one was Bad Boy. Remind me. When I saw the title, I have to admit, my mind automatically went to the uh, story of, you know, the bad boy and, and the girl who likes bad boys. Ah, oh, I remember this one now. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay. And and I kind of, you know, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, okay, that's, you know, this is kind of where this is going to go. This sort and, of trope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She goes looking after the bad boy. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, no, it, it kind of took a, a whole different turn. It got kind of turned around on the bad boy. Right. He tried to be the bad boy. Yeah. And then she went, oh, you are a bad boy, and let me punish what you for being a bad boy. What happens to bad boys? <laughs> <laughs> it, didn't, it was sexy. I'll give it that. It, it wasn't yeah. my list of favorites, but yeah. it was sexy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I enjoyed that. Yeah, because he, he was portrayed as like this big motorcycle, big dude who's like looming over, and he yeah. thinks he's going in that typical, stereotypical, like flirtatious thing of oh I can give you what you want and she's mm-hmm. like oh you will and you kind of think wait she doesn't mean what he means yeah. but you don't know what she means until she's like taking him in hand right quite literally and he's like begging for it which mm-hmm. that was a nice shift to see like yeah. that stereotype that trope of the biker dude like begging for it at mm-hmm. the end I mean that I'll, I'll admit that was nice yeah okay name, yeah. name another favorite uh, another one was the very last one, mm. Marx. Okay. And, and that was actually written by the editor, Rachel Kramer. Yes. Russell. She's an excellent writer, too. Yeah. And I, I really enjoyed that story. Mm-hmm. Um, story of a couple that went to a uh, swingers weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a good story. Mm-hmm. That was a good story. This one character in the story was concerned because they were also kinky. Mm-hmm. And they like to be beat to the point where they have a lot of bruises. Mm -hmm. And they were worried that showing bruises in this kind of environment would be frowned upon. Right, there'd be uncomfortable questions and strange looks, and they didn't want Mm -hmm. to deal with that, which I could relate to that. Yeah. I cannot relate to being in a place where I'm going to walk around naked, but if I were, yes. Mm -hmm. So I, I think what I enjoyed about that, not so much, as much as the... Um, spanking part of it and, and you know, leaving marks. Um, the the voyeuristic aspect mm. of it. Gotcha. You know what's funny? That story is a good story. I like how it ended up. Uh, another woman she saw naked with bru- marks and bruises on her ass. She was like, oh, wait, hello, you're doing this too? Mm-hmm. That woman ends up giving her a spanking. Yes. The husbands watch. They proudly, like, show their marks off later. Do you know what I think made it hard for me to enjoy? It made it a forgettable story. Like, it was good while I was reading it, but it didn't stick with me. Was because of that voyeuristic aspect. I, I'm. You would think as a reader, it's like, that makes you the ultimate voyeur. No. My favorite stories are the ones where I feel like I'm in the character's head. Mm, or I can relate okay. to a character. Okay. Uh, but I feel like I, I understand their thoughts and I understand their thinking and I'm in it. And yeah. so that the way that story was told was a very vo- felt very voyeuristic, and I was like, mm-hmm. "But see, you're not you're not like yeah. It's like my anti kink. Like <laughs> it's not a revulsion, yeah. but it's like yeah, my anti superpower. I mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. no, thank you. Now, one more I'd like to mention is uh, a story called Echoes. Remind me. Um, shenanigans in a stairwell. Oh my God, is it that forgettable? I don't remember that. I don't remember that. And I, I did read every story for the record. And, and it, well, again, this was a kind of a voyeuristic you story. Me why. Yeah. But that's who what I What was that, the plot of it? Um, <laughs> there, there, there were um, spankings and various other sexy times going on in the stairwell of a, of a, uh, like a corporate. Yeah, I think I remember that one. That is that is both the nice thing and the problem with anthologies is when you don't connect to a story, they become completely forgettable, like gone. And they're so and short, they're you, truly you, you well can and ju- gone. You just move on to the next uh, that you like. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I, I kind of like that story because you had the feeling that you were somebody that came up on these on this couple in the stairwell. Mm, yeah, mm, yeah, no. <laughs> not, not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> So is that your list of faves? That's that's my list. Okay, I'm going to tell you mine, and I have a lot less faves, and none of them were ones that you mentioned. 
<laughs> so this is not in any particular order, not even in particular order of the book itself. Mm-hmm. So I loved Butch Girls Don't Cry. So the premise of this story is there's this butch woman who is clearly really sad, but the the woman who's narrating the story is super attracted to, like it's definitely her type of partner. And she's curious and she wants to flirt and she's trying to show off her best self while she's swimming in the pool. And the, um, the other woman is working out in like their apartment gym clubhouse kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And she comes out of the water and she's trying to come out all sexy and the other woman's gone. Well, she finds her in the sauna just looking super sad and crying. And they have this really sexy spanking and sexual encounter that's super hot. But the reason it's like my favorite is because the emotions of the woman who'd been working out, the the butch lesbian who's super sad and, um, and just heartbroken over somebody broke her heart and she's still not gotten over it. So she's kind of checking out this Mm -hmm. other woman, but she's not making any moves. They do this sexual thing. And the woman who's like totally interested, like no names, like nothing. It's like a stranger encounter, which is not normally a thing I like, but this was really, I really like this one. She understands that this will probably be a one-time thing, but she wants to also offer the comfort of this moment. Yeah, And I'm, like, turned on, but also I'm crying. And I'm, like, I want them to be together, but I also like the sort of the catharsis of just this really emotional thing in the sauna that also happens to involve spanking and sex. (laughs) I really like that story. I really, really like that story. Um, Another one I liked was called A Game of Numbers. I'm kind of surprised this one didn't do it for you. So it's a kinky couple and they're walking through like a park and it's the math you didn't like. And she's like (laughs) a brilliant math person, right? And so the challenge in a public place public but they weren't like on full display like they found mm-hmm. like a little off corner um was she had to keep doing something with numbers and i'm not going to try and tell you because I, i'm a words person not a numbers person and the whole challenge was could she keep like counting up or doing a prime number thing or something something with mm-hmm. numbers while he spanked her and the whole point was if you know when she like forgot where she was or didn't get the right answer for the next the way the problem was going the pattern of numbers that she lost but it's one of those kinky games where nobody's losing no you, yeah there's a spanking going on everybody's right? winning and i the way the story was told i really enjoyed i the math part was like peripheral to me it was the challenge mm. and it was the play between the characters that i liked and i was like they're fun i kind of recognize and what was funny is the way the story was written because i felt like i was in the head of the characters I did not have a problem suspending my own disbelief for the public aspect of the play because yes, somebody could have walked up on them even though they were kind of out of the way and under different circumstances, I would not like that, but I could relate to the characters better than I had in other stories. And so then it didn't bother me, which just shows that reading is complicated and nuanced. (laughs) Uh, My next one was Birthday Boy. I do not usually have a preference or do not seek out air quote femdom um stories like i it's nice but i you know uh, a a female dom and a a male sub is it's nice but it's not something i'm that usually like Mm -hmm. turns me on this one i really liked and again it was less about the sex and the kink and the spanking and more about the story around it Mm. so marta is the wife who like is figuring out that her husband Carl probably likes some stuff that he's not getting and she's kind of feeling like she might want to explore some sides of herself and she wants to give him a good birthday present so she researches what it means to dominate and to spank somebody and she learns about herself and she learns about how to do these things there's but kind of a little bit of conversation at some point about, oh, you like this kind of thing. So for, my mind could go there and be like, okay, this is not completely <laughs> new information. And then she gives him this great spanking and he's like, she's turned on and he's turned on and it's this really cool connected moment. And I just, it's not even a story I would normally, I would never pick it up. If like, if mm. it was a standalone, I would go, yeah, that's, I'm sure that's fine. And I was like, I really liked this one. <laughs> got into the character's head so there was that (laughs) and then my last favorite on my list is writer's block Mm. and 
I, it's almost like you would think, oh, you should like the ones about writers. Well, there was actually one story about a freelance sex writer who went to a spanking thing and like, instead of just interviewing the person I actually participated and I actually didn't like that one very much. It felt a little coercive and I, and as a writer, I was like, no, that's not how I would do it. So I couldn't get into that story. I couldn't get into that mm. character's head. But in writer's block, it wasn't about the writing that I connected with. It was about the fact that, so the way the dynamic is, is the submissive or bottom, I don't think they even identified necessarily, no. writes sexy stories for their partner. And every so often, they can churn out word after word after word, and they love doing this, but every so often they go through writer's block, and it makes them cranky, and it makes them anxious. <laughs> and then <laughs> they speak out of turn. <laughs> Huh. I can't relate. Uh, <laughs> and when they speak out of turn, they get in serious trouble. But they, As one should. But they also kind of, they know they need that. Like, they resist a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, no, I don't want this mean spanking that I know I'm about to get and it's going to hurt like shit. And, oh, my God. But also. Almost like a little bit of a, a, a bratty a kind little, of thing Yeah, there was some brat there, yeah. element there. But there was this this connection between the two partners of, like, the bottom was like, push me, but also don't push me. But also I need you to take me to like the point where I'm crying. The the dominant or top understands this about their partner, whisks them the, away to like the cabin in the woods or whatever, and is going to like give it to them. And the whole time, mm. what was really intense to me was like the, the top is hitting harder and harder and going, apologize, because they had said something there. I shouldn't have said mm -hmm. And they held on to it until they literally couldn't. And then they were screaming their apology and they were crying. It was well, very cathartic. I, I think there I there that. is a, an example of, um, you know, some subs need to be broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And want to be, even if and, they can't and, and want, kind of explain yeah, that, articulate right. that. And and I think this was one of those, those yes. instances for sure. And while I don't know that I would want that to happen to me, <laughs> reading it happened to somebody else. <laughs> and again, <laughs> the way the story was written, I was in her head. And so it felt very, I don't want to say real to me, but mm -hmm. but yeah, it, it was more realistic. And if there were moments where you'd be like, mm, but that and you didn't have that conversation i could overlook that partly because it was there was an established relationship here there was a, mm, a, yeah. a familiarity with each other that this is what they this is kind of the pattern they went through and this is and then what i liked was the 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 top dom i can't remember titles of, of those characters took care of her at the end oh yeah like like did the things that i would want to see i would the i would have been upset with the story if it had ended with the catharsis and not the okay let's let's take care of you now let's get you cleaned up mm -hmm. so those were my faves i would like okay. to do um we already talked about proxy there was right. i had two stories and probably more because some stories i hate to say they were they were well written they were just forgettable mm -hmm. i had a couple stories that i was like i could have really liked this story if not for we've already talked about proxy to talk about the spanking salon so the spanking salon is this story of this super secret college group of clearly all cis guys who spank a willing partner and i was kind of ready to go into the suspension of disbelief kind of thing um with it because i'm like ooh, a sexy group of them you know people and they're mm -hmm. all spanking one another and then you get this character that for a while, like for the first little bit of the story, you can't tell what their gender is. Right. But they're talking about their roommate or their friend or whatever got an invite to the super secret club on campus. They're sick. They're going to take their invite and go because they really want to get into it. And I'm having expectations of this story of how I want it to go. And how I want it to go, especially once we find out that the character is a cis woman, is that she wants to do some spanking of her own. And my disappointment, there's, I have a few disappointments there. My disappointment was when we find out she gets in, of course she gets found out, and it's mm -hmm. because she wants to be spanked. And I was like, this had the potential to be a really good story, even okay. with like the frat boy kind of element that I'm not really into. I'm like, this could have been a really good story. Why did we go down this path? Now, see, I'm glad you, you brought this story up because I enjoyed the story. Mm -hmm. And it came close to making it to my list. Mm. Because unlike you, I, I enjoyed the twist of not knowing the person's gender. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. That, that I thought was a really good I twist. I thought that was a really clever thing. Like, you're assuming it's a guy because the... They're talking about right. this all guy club, and the friend is a guy. And, and I'm like, oh, okay, they're a guy. 
And then, to me, what was like a, a double twist of them not there to give a spanking, but to be spanked. See, and, and I... That, to me, was like a double twist. Where this story lost me, mm -hmm. unfortunately, I liked the story. I liked the premise of the story. Mm -hmm. I felt that a short story did not do it justice. Oh, that could have been a long that story, sure. It had a lot more to be told, and, and it should be a story unto itself. Yeah, especially since, like, the way they introduced, so the way the, the group works is, like, there's a whole group of them, and they spank this one person. Mm -hmm. And they implied, or maybe they said that this person was a sex worker who was hired yeah. for this. And that's, I don't have a problem with that at all. But part of it was the implication that they couldn't find anybody who was willing to be spanked. Yeah. And I'm like... Well, if you're a bunch of like dude bros on college campus, nah, I'm not, I'm not interested in you either. But also, you're <laughs> clearly not trying that hard because right? people, regardless mm. of gender, there are people who would like to be spanked. Uh, so <laughs> it's like, mm. and then, so there was a little, I don't, am I being too strong if I say it felt like there was a little bit of non-consent? Non Here's why. So what happens is, as part of the initiation in the super secret group, the leader spanks the, and the way they make it sound, so always a cis woman, spanks the woman while the initiates watch, and then they all sort of, it's like a circle jerk, they all pull it out and they start <laughs> jacking off, but our main character does not, because then she would give herself away. Well, they're taunting this person that they think is a guy, like, why aren't you, you know, why are you holding back? You clearly want to, like, you know, you're clearly turned mm. on. Why aren't you doing something about it? And they literally walk up and stick their hand down her pants like they're going to whip out her junk. And that's when they discover she has different junk. And I was like, what? What is happening here? <laughs> what is happening here? <laughs> so, and then she becomes the centerpiece and becomes the one who gets spanked and she's happy. And I'm like, we could have gotten here so many different ways. I do think that it would have been interesting as a longer story with a lot more context, but mm -hmm. also, what? So, like, is the story well written? Yeah. Is the spanking scene hot? Yeah. Is mm -hmm. the idea of thinking about all these people, like, getting off on watching this, even though I'm not a voyeur? I mean, yeah, but also, why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> so let's go into let, let's finish on a high note or a rant I mean some people are here for the rants not that that wasn't one let's go with the stories we didn't like I only had two that I uh, well, apparently the spanking salon would be a third mm -hmm. I only had two I genuinely did not like for specific reasons not because they were not well written did you have any that you were like I really did not like that story Um. yes and it's on your list oh so, well, is it, is it my first one on my list or my second one? Second one. The, obviously, you like the first one. Right. So here's where I'm going to be contrarian. Spoiler, <laughs> we said this at the top of this video. I did not like The Perfect Dom. So, again, well written. The, the author who wrote it is somebody I've read in the past. They're a great writer. Mm -hmm. Nothing about that was a problem. The story itself, sexy. The spanking, sexy. The heat between the characters, sexy. It was, and I think it was towards the end. Like, I was going along with the story. Going, it probably wouldn't have been a favorite, but it wouldn't mm. have been a worst. It would have been one of those forgettable ones. I was like, okay, yeah. Until we get to the point where she's thinking to herself with zero conversation with the other person that this is her dom and he's the perfect dom and she's finally found him and he's going to give her everything she wants. That's the implication. And I'm like, how do you know this? <laughs> Why? How? What? <laughs> what are we doing here? And, and it was... And, that is, it's such a personal thing as a reader, because I'm sure there are plenty of readers who would read that and go, oh, yes, it's my fantasy, that's great. Or yeah, I totally get it. Or it just didn't even bother them. And something about it jarred me out of that headspace. And I went, mm. I now officially don't like this story. And it's a perfectly acceptable story up until that one little bit towards the end. But it changed how I saw the whole thing. I was like, okay. eh, I don't care how hot it is. I don't care how well written it is. Eh, eh, eh. No, thank you. The other one, and I'll be very curious as to why you don't like this one, too. And I feel a little vindicated. I thought I was maybe just being mm -mm, cranky. Mm -mm. It's called Spanking the Monkey. And I think the more I think about it, I think the more there are problems with this story. But I'll tell you what I didn't yeah. like about it. We'll go into what you didn't like about it. Spanking the Monkey is this dude who is fantasizing about the spanking he would love to 
receive, right? Yes. Right. Uh, from his wife's best friend. And we're in his head and he's he mentions that he tried to talk to his wife about it and she mm -hmm. blew him off, kind of laughed it off. He never revisited. Um, now he fantasizes about his wife's best friend who he thinks might even be into it. And he's fantasizing, 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 and he's jacking off all fantasizing. Now, I don't have a problem with any of that. Here's the problem I had with the story. I'm sure there's a conversation we had about fantasizing about your wife's best friend, but people fantasize about mm -hmm. who they fantasize about. Why was I, I part of it was expectation as a reader. I'm reading it going, oh my god, they're gonna they're gonna have this sexy thing. This would be so sexy. Right. And everybody consented. And then there's the spanking thing and, and he communicates his feelings and they reciprocate, maybe. That would be a great way for this story to go. And then he gets what he wants, and yay, we all get to read about it. No, he ends up masturbating. Now, look, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that at all. Here's where I have the problem with it. He's thinking about all the things he wants to say and what he wants to do. And he mentions that he had this one forgotten conversation with his wife ages ago and then just never brought it up again. And I, as a reader, went, have a fucking conversation. Exactly. And, 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 oh that, was, and that was my thing. <laughs> and, and I really thought that's where the story was going to go. It's, to me, it's where it needed to go. Yeah. The buildup was like... There would, I figured there'd be a dropped hint. There'd be a little conversation. He'd mm -hmm. talk to his wife. She'd be like, you know, or she would come to him and go, you know, that's that thing you mentioned to me a while back. My, my bestie over here, she's kind of into it. She thinks you're cute too. Wouldn't, and I know that's not realistic for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. That's the point. That's why I wanted that story. Yeah. And, and I think that's what it was for me too. You know, it's like nobody was having the conversation. Nobody. And he's watching. And then I kind of, once I realized there was going to be no conversation, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, just like lurking and just staring at your wife's best friend from across mm -hmm. from her. That's creepy it, it as was, hell. It was Don't a little, it, it was kind of creepy. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Once yes. I realized we were not moving in yes. that direction, I was like, <laughs> I don't like this. The fantasy of what could have happened, that was hot. And maybe if the fantasy had been framed differently, but we get a lot of, and I'm watching her here and I'm watching her there and I'm doing a lot of watching and I'm like, mm -hmm. um, no, thank you. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did yeah. not like that mm -hmm. one at all. And I felt bad because I know people have those kinds of fantasies and I know people live in those kinds of situations where they want True. things they can't have but this something about it I was like but this is a story and it's fiction where you can do anything you literally want unicorns could fall from the ceiling if you want it okay <laughs> wouldn't make any sense but it could oh. happen so <laughs> if anything literally anything can happen in a story why can't the fantasy be made reality in the fictional yeah. story because that to me would have been a much more sad especially since he came across as sounded creepy it sounded so creepy yeah yeah and yet again well-written stories they're put together i'll say this if i can criticize your storytelling and i'm not saying oh lord what kind of sentence structure is that then that's the author's doing mm -hmm. something right it's just not a story for me it did not hit my yeah. buttons so the thing i would want to say about that is if you first of all what are your favorite stories <laughs> what are the stories mm -hmm. you dislike what are the stories that you were like, it could have been better if this problematic thing hadn't mm -hmm. been there? Um, definitely want to hear that. But also I want to remind people that that's the beauty of this. You might have loved a story I just shredded and that's okay. You get to like what you like. I get to hate what I hate. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the nice thing about this. That's why it's so fun to do fiction because we're all going to have different reactions to it. I mean, I see people who will say things like, well, we all know Fifty Shades is universally hated. No, the hell it's not. I know plenty of people who still to this day love yeah. those stories and like the movies. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a, it's like our kinks. It's all unique to us. We respond to things the way that we respond True. to them. Me disliking a story you loved is not a reflection on you or the story. In my personal opinion, but I was, it's kind of fun to rant about them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's Kinky Book Club for this mm -hmm. month. Cheeky spanking stories. Uh, it's available as an ebook and a physical book. As you can see, we have a physical book. I don't think it's audiobook, but you can always check. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> if you read later and come back, come back and let us know in the comments what did you think, which ones, you know, just let us mm -hmm. know. Um, for next month in May, we're back to nonfiction. Okay. And we're reading the new Topping book mm. by Dossie Easton, Janet Hardy. Uh, and that will be interesting. We're reading it in 
ebook. Correct. Which means we don't have to share it like we had to share this. <laughs> I kept going, I'm reading as fast as I can and I'll get it to you. <laughs> then I was like, have you read it yet? Um, <laughs> so we'll shift back probably into a, a less rant like video because I tend to like their writing and I like their, mm, I like their philosophy yeah. in the new bottoming book. I assume I'll like it in the new topping book. So we hope we can that, only hope. Yeah, we hope that you'll join us for that. Yeah. You can join in on Kinky Book Club at any point. Like if you go month to month with us, great. But if you come to this late, the link to all the books we're reading for 2021 is below. I'll link to the playlist so you can see other videos. Comment whenever you happen to see this video if you have thoughts on our thoughts or your thoughts on the book itself. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we just want to, we want to help more people find more things to read. Some of these um, books that we have on the list are also audiobooks if you prefer to listen. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, often an option. Yeah. yeah. So that's it for us, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Uh, if you enjoyed this, uh, we love a thumbs up. If Absolutely. you want more of it and want to encourage us to do more of it, why would you do that? But if you want to, uh, <laughs> consider subscribing to the channel. And when you subscribe, ring that bell so you get updates of new content just do what daddy says and if you want more of this and you want to help us do more of this uh join us on patreon patreon.com slash kill the lords bye, bye.